So far in our GraphQL server with Hot Chocolate, we've added queries for getting data and mutations for creating, updating, and deleting data. Now, those are two of the three main operations with GraphQL, but the last operation we want to look at is subscriptions. And subscriptions allow clients to subscribe to some kind of event on our API and receive notifications whenever that event occurs. So getting started with subscriptions, as we've done in the past, we've added a query type and we've added the mutation type. So as you may have guessed, we are going to add a subscription type and we're going to have to create that subscription type as we've done with queries and mutations. So over in our schema, I'm going to put this in a new folder in our schema. Let's add that and we're going to call this subscriptions and inside this subscriptions folder we're just going to have a single class right now and we're going to call this subscription and now that we have this class this is going to be our root subscription type so we're going to register this as our subscription type for our graphql service let's just pass that in there and import our namespace so while we're in our startup.cs we are going to continue configuring our asp.net server so for subscriptions the way that they're pushed to the client to notify the client whenever some kind of event occurs, GraphQL uses WebSockets. So we need to configure our ASP.NET Web application to use WebSockets. And I believe order of middleware does matter here. At least the way I've always done this is having used WebSockets after user adding and before use endpoints. You can try any other way you want, but just keep in mind that if it doesn't work, you probably just have to adjust your ordering. Now we just need a subscription provider so that Hot Chocolate has a place to manage the events that we publish. And for that, you could use something more advanced like Redis, which will be useful if you had multiple instances of your web server running in some kind of distributed environment. But for this simple application, all we're gonna do is use an in-memory subscription provider. So for that, we register that in our services we're going to add in memory subscriptions. So that is part of hot chocolate, I believe. But this is just a simple approach for now. We can always swap this out down the road if we want to. So now that we're all set up, let's head over to our subscription type and set up our first event that we can subscribe to. So ultimately, I want my client to receive a notification whenever a course is created. So we're gonna have a method on our subscription type where the client will receive the course type whenever a course is created. And we're gonna raise this event with the course that was created. So we're gonna pass that in here, the course. And all we're gonna do is return the created course. So we can just have an error function here and return the course that was passed in. So this course will get pushed to whoever subscribed to this event. So we do need to mark this as something that we can subscribe to. So we use a subscribe attribute, part of hot chocolate. And this course type that gets passed in is part of the event message. So we are gonna have to specify an attribute for that, part of hot chocolate as well. So now that clients can subscribe to this course created event, we're gonna have to raise that event. So when are we gonna raise that? Well, we're gonna raise it whenever a course is created. So in our mutations, we have this create course mutation. So once this course was created, so just added to our in-memory list, we are gonna have to raise this event. And to do that, we are gonna have to use a topic event sender. So we could inject that through the constructor, but another thing you can do with hot chocolate is just inject services directly into your mutation method, which is kind of cool, so I figure I'll show it off. And to do that, we use this service attribute, part of hot chocolate, and we want the i topic event sender. So import that from hot chocolate. And all we're gonna do with this topic event sender is after we create the course, we are going to send a sync. So this is what we use to publish the event. And we're publishing this event to a topic. So what is our topic? Well, in this case, it's just the name of this course created method. So we want to publish to that topic. So we are just going to take the name of, so get some strong typing in here. And we want our subscription class in here. So import that. And on that class, we want the name of our course created method. And the message that we're publishing to this topic based on our subscription is just the course that was created. So we're going to pass that in here, the course type. I don't know why I named this course type. This should just be course. But the last thing we have to do, of course, is make sure we await the send a sync. So let's await here and we're going to have to make our method async. 
and return a task with our course result. So I think we're ready to test this out. Let's put a breakpoint here in our create course mutation and let's put a breakpoint in our subscription. So let's run this and over in banana cake pop, let's get a new document in here. Let's just get rid of this delete course mutation. We don't need that. And we're going to make a subscription. Let me reload the schema real quick. And we're going to subscribe to course created. And when we get a notification from course created, that's going to return our course type. So from that, I want to extract the ID of the created course. And how about just the name? How about the subject too? So let's go ahead and subscribe to this. And it's going to wait until we actually create a course. So let's go ahead and create one. So I already have a document open for that, a mutation to create a course. We got some content in here. So let's go ahead and create it, which we can't because we are waiting on that subscription. So let's just throw this into a new tab real quick. And here we go. Our mutation is still here. So let's go ahead and run this. And all right, we are going to publish our course created event with the course that we created. Looks good. Let's continue. And oh, we get an error. And I think I know why. So I should have noticed this when we were renaming course result to just course. The issue is that this is a course result. So ultimately, we're publishing course created with a course result. But that is not what our subscription calls for. Our subscription calls for a course type, which is not what we want. We want a course result. We want to get the result of creating that course. So let's paste that in there. Make sure we import that. And all right, take two. Let's run this again. Get our breakpoint back, please. So let's subscribe to course created again. There we go, waiting. And let's create a course. We're going to publish this event again. Let's continue. And there we go. Now we hit the breakpoint in our subscription. So we are going to publish course created. Let's continue. And let's look at banana cake pop. So our mutation was successful. We created the course and back in our instance where we subscribed to course created. There we go. There's the data. And as you can see, it's still waiting for more events to be published. So we can create another course and there we go. So we got another course created and I guess we didn't really change anything, but we did get a new ID. So we got D one D blah, blah, blah. And that's the same as the course that was just created. So this covers the essentials of subscriptions. But what about more advanced events? What if we had something like we want a course result whenever a course is updated? And what if in this case, I only want to receive events for a specific course? So maybe we only want to receive updates regarding a specific course name. So first off, the way that we publish to this topic is going to be much different. So in our mutation, let's get our topic event sender and paste that into our update course mutation because obviously this is where we're going to publish to our course updated topic so once our course has been updated we're going to take our topic event sender and we're going to send an event and our topic here is not going to be the name of subscription course updated because we want to publish to topics that are specific to the course name so we're going to use a custom topic here. So the way this is going to be constructed, we're going to use a convention here and it's just going to be a string. We'll call this the update course topic. And the convention we're going to use here to make this topic per course name is using some string interpolation. We're going to first have the course name as the prefix. And then after that, we're going to have the name of our subscription course updated method name. So use name of in there with subscription course updated. So we're going to publish to this topic and we're going to pass in the updated course. So just course. And now that I think about it real quick, I feel kind of weird about making this subscription based on course name because course name isn't even unique in our application. And also we could update the course name to be something else. So how do we manage that? Do we then raise an event for the old course name as well? So instead what I'm going to do is do course ID instead, which is a good. And then we'll update that as well for the custom course topic name to just be for the course ID. And then I'm gonna have to await this as well. So make this method async. So we're publishing this event to this custom topic name, but our subscription type has no idea 
what that custom topic name is. It has no idea how to manage it. So this is where the tricky part comes in. And we're going to have to manually use a service that's part of Hot Chocolate. And that is the topic event receiver. So now we're using the topic event receiver. And in our mutation, we're using the topic event sender to publish events to our custom topic name. So using the topic event receiver, we can manually subscribe to that custom topic name. So we're going to take our topic event receiver and subscribe a sync the name of our topic. Let me just grab this the way that we interpolated that copy that might be worth putting this into like a centralized method that creates this interpolated string. But we're just going to pass in the course ID that we want to subscribe to. So we do have to specify the type parameters here because they can't be inferred, which makes sense because it doesn't know what T message is. So our T topic, so the topic we pass in, that's just a string. And the message that is published to this topic we know is a course result. As we see over in our mutation, that is the course that we pass in. So this is all getting kind of long. I'm going to extract this string into a variable real quick. So the topic name and the subscribe method returns our subscription. So actually all we have to do is return this from our method. So we are going to have to change our return type. So this is a value task for an I source stream for our course result. And then lastly, we do have to decorate this method with subscribe and resolve. So subscribe and resolve, what that does is automatically resolves the course result as the value that's returned whenever our topic is published to, which is different than up here where we explicitly stated that we want our course to be resolved, which was kind of nice. So if you do want to split this up into like this manual subscription and then have a custom resolver as well, I believe there's a way to do that. You'd have to check the hot chocolate docs, but in our case, this does work for us. So we're going to test this out. Let's put a breakpoint right here. And this is actually going to get fired at a different time than when this was because we're using subscribe and resolve. And this is where we actually do the subscription. And let's also put a breakpoint where we update the course and let's run this. All right. So reload the schema. We are going to make a subscription to course updated and we're going to pass in the course ID. So actually, first, we're going to have to create a course. Let's do that real quick. Let's create this algorithms course. Grab that course ID, paste that in as our parameter. And whenever that course is updated, I want the new course name and the new course subject. So let's make that subscription. There we go. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And we've hit our breakpoint. So this is different than before, where we would hit this breakpoint up here whenever our topic was published to. But this is actually where we're making the subscription since we're doing that manually for this custom topic name. So let's continue there. We've made the subscription and let me grab that course ID that we want updates for. And we're going to update a course. I already have a document here that has that mutation. So we're going to make it. We got a new course name and a new course subject. Let's execute that. We are going to publish to our custom topic name. As you can see, there's the ID with course updated. Let's continue now. So all good. The course was updated. Let's go see. And there we go. Our subscription returns the updated data. So that covers the core functionality of subscriptions. Just to review, we added a custom subscription type. We made sure that we enabled WebSockets for our ASP.NET web applications so that we could push these events to our client. And then we also added in-memory subscriptions, which is fine in our case, but you might want to consider using something like Redis if you're running in a cloud environment and you have multiple instances of your application running and you want more reliability for your events that you publish. So after that setup, we implemented our subscriptions. So whenever a course is created, we'll push that created course to the client. And whenever a course is updated for a specific course ID, we'll also push that course to any of the clients that have subscribed. And then finally, of course, we had to publish to these topics, which we do in the corresponding mutations using the topic event sender to send events to our topics with the message data. So hopefully you can apply subscriptions to your own application. It's always fun to automatically see updates get pushed in real time to the client. So I'm excited to implement that on the client side in my GraphQL client series with Strawberry Shake. So keep an eye out for that too. But in the meantime, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave them below in the comment section. 
If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like or subscribe for more. Thank you.